Why blast your body when you can teach your immune system to hunt the tumor? How many times have you seen this story? Treatment works at first and then the cancer comes back all together. Today I'll show you why this happens and how we can flip the script so we have a far better chance at a long-term remission, which is the goal for every patient. I'm Dr. Dino Prado. For the last 25 years, my team and I have helped thousands of patients flip the script on their cancer treatment using precision targeting. We're gonna outsmart cancer with immunity and we'll get into that in this episode. Less guesswork and more life. I'll show you why the old playbook of cut, poison, and burn is being replaced by what I call precision sniper care that preserves your strength and trains your immune system. Give me about 10 minutes and I'll show you how to move from guesswork to precision care at any stage, from surgery to chemo and radiation to precision targeting that can make all the difference and make your immune system the hero of the care. So what's broken with the current playbook? Well, surgery, chemo, and radiation, they do save lives, particularly in early stage disease. But here's the catch. Relapse, resistance, and reoccurrence is way too common. In my clinical view, the difference maker is your immune system. It's the first and last defense against cancer. And many patients don't understand that. Many standard approaches to oncology actually weaken the immune system, and it's not part of the care. It's ignored. Maybe there's a PD-1 inhibitor thrown in there. It's totally ignored. Instead of actually building the care on your immune system. Your immune system is the way your body knows to fight cancer. When it's healthy, about 10,000 times a day, it deletes cancer. Even when chemo helps, it's your immune system that's ultimately doing the cleanup and the work and passing the information on to the body. So why do late stage results often look cytostatic, meaning slow it down, meaning all the treatment they're using is to slow the cancer down, not actually kill it? And why do PD-1 drugs help only a portion of the patients long term, maybe like 19% long term, because they're just don't answer the full immunotherapy question, because they can't solve the full immunotherapy problem and fix it. So chemo, at the maximum tolerated doses or maximum therapeutic doses causes dose-dependent myelosuppression, neutropenia, weakening of your white blood cells, lowering infection risk, fatigue, delays, the dose cuts and blunts results. This is well documented across regimens. Even when we infuse the right drugs, most of it never even can reach the tumor because the tumors have blockades that stop the chemo from getting there. A landmark of analysis across hundreds of nano medicine databases found that only 0.7% of injected doses hit the tumor. That's seven out of a thousand units, which explains the high collateral damage to the central nervous system and organs and durability to health. That's blasting the body. So we stop carpet bombing and we go direct to the tumor with precision and we make the plan immune centric, meaning we give the body what it needs so the immune system can do the work it was designed to do. This is how we replace the old surgery, chemo and radiation model. We use directed tumor targeting, interventional radiology oncology, either freeze the tumor or directly deliver the medicine with a catheter the size of the hair so small to the tumor and come out through the blood supply and cut off the blood supply to the tumor. We infuse the body with immune therapy. We use immunotherapy to turn cold tumors hot so the rest of the body knows where the cancer is and can go to it. In some cases, if it's small enough, we just freeze the tumor and keep the antigen so the immune system knows where to fight the cancer. With image-guided cryoablation or image-guided chemoembolization, we can slide the needle the size of a whisker into the tumor and kill it or freeze it with very low risk at all to the patient. And we can see that this does the job of killing the cancer, but it's just the beginning. Because when we go there, we first want to deliver an immune-centric care so that we tell the immune system all throughout the body where this cancer is. So even if we treat one side of the body, we can see tumors disappearing elsewhere because of the immune system response. That's the power of precision oncology. Precision tools, quality of life, direct to tumor, removing the guesswork, not being toxic to the rest of the body, giving the body the vitamins, the nutrients, the minerals it needs to heal, helping the body be healthy, changing the tumor microenvironment, right? The milieu, the environment, so cancer cells don't grow easily. This is all part of the treatment plan, but we want to take the cancer out because the sooner we take the cancer out, the faster we can change the body's environment. So we're now using the immune system to go after surveillance and circulating tumor cells, not have to take out the whole tumor by itself. We flood the bloodstream with key nutrients, key phytotherapeutics that have been targeted based on your 
DNA, RNA, and immune profiling. We strengthen the liver and clean it, help with detoxification. We help the body restore its proper immune system. This is the key that we see in precision oncology. And so now with intertumoral immunotherapy and phytotherapeutics and integrative care to support the body, we lower toxicity and help our patients. And we do this with the latest technologies. We can monitor this by just drawing blood from your arm and look at circulating tumor cells, CT-free DNA, methylation. We can tell if the cancer is spreading or not, if the treatment's working or not. This is the power of precision oncology. Less collateral damage and direct-to-treatment care with the immune system at the driving point. So we build an immune system that recognizes the cancer, that recognizes where it is. And you can even look at things like natural killer cell therapies that we use, a toggleless adoptive immunotherapy, where we use your own cells, use damps, damage-associated molecular patterns, these signals that tell the body exactly where the tumor is. Your natural killer cells now can go and fight the cancer. Your dendritic cells can give the right signaling. So you create this virtuous cycle. Your dendritic cell, gather the information, pass it to your natural killer cell, and the natural killer cell does the killing. So the best way for me to explain this in an analogy is you have a detective. It does all the detective work. That's the dendritic cell. Picks up all the antigens, the shedded particles from the outside of the tumor, and passes that to the natural killer cell. And then the natural killer cell acts as like a police sniper and goes right in and takes out the tumor because it knows where it is, but it can do it throughout the body. This is more powerful than a drug because your immune system thinks it's not a chemical. It knows where to go. It can burrow through bone, into the blood-brain barrier, wherever it needs to go, it can get there. That's the power of immunity. That's why having an immune-centric protocol makes all the difference. This is what we've seen in our clinical experience. And this is how we get rid of the surgery and the chemo and the radiation, use elegance and targeted so patients can have a better quality of life. The old oncology leaned on, you know, cutting chemo and and doing radiation and then if they're going to run some dna tests it's just going to be small panels this is very different than precision oncology where we look at thousands of markers we look at spatial biology and immunotherapy and we target it you don't have to take my word for it if you look at studies like i predict they showed the more match you have on that dna targets the better the patients did and with studies like winter the same thing they used rna expressions alongside the dna and they got better outcomes for their patients now imagine what i'm talking talking about, which is the work we do in precision, which is looking at thousands of markers, not just DNA, RNA, but spatial biology, cell composition, understanding your immune system's response, then custom building the treatment for the patient using on-label drugs, which could be maybe already approved for you in micro doses, because you don't need high dose. You don't lose your hair. You don't get fatigued. One of the things that you have to understand is that whether you're using a natural agent or a drug, I've been doing this for 25 years, thousands and thousands of patients, dose is everything. And the right target is everything. A small dose can do everything we need it to do without harming the patient. And the same thing is true. If we use a natural agent in some super mega dose, it can harm you. So it's knowing the right dose and the right combinations. And the work we've done has been shown in the published paper we, we published in 2024. We reported 35-fold improvement in responses with late-stage cancers and a 43-fold improvement in quality of life because of this targeting and treatment model. And so this is the key, in our opinion, to removing the guesswork and moving from the old model, which I think is archaic, and moving to a precision model, which gives you better targeting and better care. So we don't want to wait for just the big scans to tell us, oh, the cancer came back. We want to use blood tests that tell us, oh, your circulating tumor cell counts are up, or your methylation score went up, the cancer is returning, or it's not responding. So now we can customize the care right to the patient's resistance, which is important in late stage cancers. The earlier the cancers, the less that's needed. The later the cancers, the more, because they can be very fast and mutating. Some of the different difficult cancers can mutate really quickly. So we stay on top of it. And that's what gives us the success in treating our patients is we can monitor the care. So we see great results in precision care from breast, prostate, colon, lung, pancreatic, you name it. Almost every cancer type, when we treat using precision oncology, we have a huge advantage of getting rid of the old model and moving into the new model. An ultra-sensitive test is so important, not just for planning the treatment, but also monitoring the patient so that we know months before a scan was to appear, whether the patient going to hold remission or not. That's the intelligence of precision oncology. Smart care, purposed, right for the patient. Now, I went into this for a minute because you think, well, okay, I'm going to run some tests and this is going to tell my doctor which chemo 
to give me and then he'll give it to me. That's not how it works because the testing that they're doing is so minimal that when you run the full DNA, RNA, and all these thousands of markers, many of these markers do not have drugs that are available. They have to be custom made. They have to be prepared in pharmacies. So you may use an on-label drug that might be used for ovarian cancer, but it's going to be used in colon cancer, etc. At the same time, you may use a repurposed drug, something like you've heard of before, ivermectin. That might be a good fit for you, but you don't know that because we get calls, thousands of calls, where people are tried ivermectin, meth ivermectin, methylene blue, menbendazole. Uh, they've tried all kinds of things, high-dose vitamin C, chemotherapy. It didn't work for them because the targets weren't right. But if we have the right targets, we can build many different repurposed drugs, which we do every day, and we can include phytotherapeutics, nanoparticle IV delivery of phytotherapeutics, your curcumins, your ECCG. There's a whole series of these that are plants that have chemotherapy-like actions that we call adjuvant, and they support the care of the patient. Then we can build custom immunotherapies using your own natural killer cells and dendritic cells to teach your immune system to fight the cancer and go after it. So we don't want to just give a kitchen sink of vitamins and nutraceuticals because they can block your treatment. You want to use the right medicines and the right dose and the right synergy. We've been doing this for 25 years and it makes a big difference in patient outcome to have the right dosing and the right schedule. So the key first step is testing. And I'm not talking about standard oncology DNA testing. I'm talking about advanced multi-omics testing, RNA, DNA, spatial biology. The next step is to go custom build the medicines and how they're going to be delivered. Is it going to be direct to tumor because there's stromal barriers protecting the chemo from even getting there? I've said this on many other uh, programs where only less than one, two, three, five percent of the chemo actually makes it to the tumor. So let's get it up to 98 to 100 percent. And we can do that with direct to tumor in that patient. At the same time, now we know what treatments we need and how to deliver them. Microdose, genetically targeted fractionated chemotherapy, direct to tumor SIPI, chemoimmunoprecision injection, or AAIT, a toggless adoptive immunotherapy, where we can build an immune system to the to go after the cancer. Even in technologies where we use interventional radiology oncology, we can basically cut the blood supply off to the tumor while we're delivering the medicines, which is really intelligent because now it just slows everything down and gives us a huge advantage to get the immune system trained again to go after the cancer and find it. Precision makes all the difference. The adjuvants, the natural agents, the minerals, the vitamins, all of those things, the mineral, the vitamins, the enzymes, all those things are really important too and they have to be targeted for the patient. In reality, every cancer patient needs this type of planning. This is what we've seen make all the difference. And I think the old model is archaic and the new model is this precision on every level. It's so precise, no surgery, no side effects, no radiation, just targeted care, early care, getting the body's immune system involved and getting rid of the cancer. I think that's the future of oncology. That's where it's going. I hope this was helpful and gave you an idea of how we're transforming the space of oncology and really about 10 to 15 years ahead of what standard of care oncology is doing today by using these combinations for our patients. May the Lord bless you on your journey to healing.